In this video, we are going to be building a home inspection website with the Pro Home Inspector website template. To keep this video from being longer than it should, I'm going to be moving somewhat fast. If I get ahead of you, please feel free to pause the video and work at your own pace. The download folder itself has two main files that you're going to need in order to follow along. The first file, of course, is the template, and the second file is the questionnaire or the brand identity worksheet. And that will help you get the information you need to start the customization process. So let's go over what we have and then we'll get started. As you can see in the main window, I have a fresh installation of WordPress. Then in the bottom right hand corner, I have the website template download folder. The document you are seeing on the right hand side of the page is the brand identity worksheet. The worksheet is nothing more than a place for you to store your base information so that you can copy and paste the content and save time during the initial design process. It has placeholders for the content as you open it. And what you need to do from here is just take some time and fill out the worksheet. Most of the fields are self-explanatory, but there are a few that may be a little confusing, and I wanted to talk about them now. The first one is the phone number link. If you're in the US, all you have to do is replace the phone number, but keep the periods and everything else in place. If you're not in the US, then you need to replace the country code as well. This link is important because it's how people are going to be able to click a button on your website and call you. So be sure you get the right phone number listed. The next thing is the brand color section. If you don't know your brand colors or just have them worked into your logo, don't worry, I'll show you how you can get those as we move into customizing the template. You do not have to have the exact color code right now. Remember that you can get started and go back later and fine tune the design and content. Other than that, you just have the social media links and the embed code for your schedule inspection form. Now that we've covered that, let's hop into the dashboard of WordPress and install the template. The first thing we're going to need to do is go to plugins and then we're going to click on add new. From here in the search bar, we're going to type in WP Vivid. Once you type in WP Vivid, you will see the migration backup and staging plugin by WP Vivid. We're going to go ahead and click on install now. Once it installs, click on activate. Now that we have this in, the next step is to actually install the template. So we're going to go ahead and click on upload. Then what we're going to do from here is you can either click select files and find the actual template file and upload it this way, or you can come over in the folder here and just grab the template, which is the .zip file, and we're gonna drop that right in there. Then we're gonna click on upload. This could take a few minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward, and I'll be back in a second. All right, as you can see, the upload has been completed, so we're gonna go ahead and click on OK. And then it's gonna take us right back to the same page, but this time if you scroll down, you'll see the template loaded here. What we're gonna do from here is just click on restore. We'll hit restore again. It will verify that you wanna do this. And the reason it's doing this is it wants to make sure that if you're doing this on a site that already exists, it's wiping all that information clean, which is why we're starting with a fresh ins. So we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. And it's gonna start unpacking and installing and doing all the fancy stuff. Could take a few minutes, so I'm gonna skip forward and I'll be right back. Once it finishes installing everything, we're gonna go ahead and click OK. If you see that it's logged out, don't worry, it's supposed to do that. The next thing we need to do is actually log in. So what we're gonna need to do is come over here in our brand identity worksheet and we have the basic template login information here in the worksheet. So we're gonna go ahead and put our user and password in, which is hashtag delete me now, capital D, capital M, three instead of an E, capital N, zero, lowercase w, exclamation mark, just as you see on the screen. And we're gonna go ahead and click on login. First thing that comes up is to verify your email address. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and click on update. And then right here where it says administration email address. And if you can't get back to this or if that didn't show up for you, you can simply just come under settings on the left hand side 
under general and it will get you to this same page. Now from here, there's three things we're going to change, but we're going to start with the administration email first. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this huge temporary email address that was used to build the template and we're gonna put in our actual email address. Once we have our email address in, we're gonna go ahead and click on Save Changes. Now that we got that set up, we can go back in to our email address and verify that email. I'm not going to walk you through that because I do have some personal information in the email, but all you need to do is open the email address and it will have a link that says click here to verify that you wanna use this email address as the administration email address. And once you click that, it will automatically be finished here. So now on to the next two things we need to change, which is the site title and the tagline. The site title is going to be your business name. So I'm just gonna come over here inside of the brand identity worksheet. We're just gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it in over here. We're gonna do the same thing with the tagline. Once you get your title and tagline in, we're gonna come down and click on save changes. The next thing we're gonna do is create our own user account so we can get rid of the template user. So we're gonna come down the left hand side where it says users and we're gonna click on add new. From here, we're gonna simply put in all of our information, set a password, make sure the role is set to administrator and add the new user. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that out. I'll be right back. All right, once you have everything filled out and you make sure you get all your information correct, you wanna go ahead and click on add new user. Our next step is to actually log out and log back in with our new user account. So what we're gonna do is up in the right hand corner of the window where it says, how do you start? You're gonna hover over and click on log out. Because I saved my information, it's already populated for me. If not, go ahead and enter in your username and password and click on log in. Now we're gonna go back to users. We're gonna click on all users and we're gonna come in here and click on delete under the start username. So we'll click on delete. Then we'll click attribute all content to, and then this will have the new user that you just created. And then we'll click on confirm deletion. And now if you've done that right, you'll see you have your new user you created and the start user is gone. The next step is our permalinks. So we're gonna come under settings and we're gonna go down to permalinks. You wanna make sure that post name is selected, then come down and click on save changes. You shouldn't have to change anything here. You're only coming in to click save changes. And now that we've saved those changes, if we actually wanna pull a site up, we can open the site and see that we have the template installed, all the content is there, so back into the WordPress dashboard, the next thing we're gonna do is called Pretty Links. So we're gonna come over, we're gonna click on Pretty Links. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and put all of the links that you have from the brand identity worksheet over into these fields. So that way all the social media links and everything throughout the template automatically will redirect over to the proper profiles. The way we're gonna do that is you're just gonna come to each of the individual pretty links and click on edit. And then you change the target URL to what it needs to be. Homepage is the only one that we don't have here and this is just gonna be your domain. Once you get your domain in, we'll go ahead and click on update. Then we're gonna just go down the list. Leave Facebook review, you'll click edit. You'll paste in the review link here and you'll continue to go down the list because these are not actual, the social media accounts for this. I'm not trying to take up more time just watching me do the same thing over and over. So we're gonna go ahead and assume that you have these done. If you don't, once again, feel free to pause the video, get those added and we'll move forward. So we're gonna go ahead and click on dashboard and get back to the dashboard. Then we're gonna come under appearance and click on customize. This is where we're going to be changing the logo and the site icon, which is the little icon you see up here in the tab. So we're gonna go ahead and click on site identity and we're gonna get started with the logo first. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out of this and I have all my basic information here, which is just the headshot, icon, the logo, and an image for this background section of the homepage, just to get the customization started. So the first thing we're gonna do is the logo. We'll click change logo. Then we'll drag the logo in. Add an alt text. Click select. It'll automatically attempt to crop the logo. If it is cropping part of your actual logo, be sure to click on skip cropping. If it doesn't really crop the actual logo itself and it's just dead space as you see mine is, you can go ahead and click on crop image. Now that we have the logo in, we'll come down here and click on change image for the icon. Click on upload and we'll drag the icon in. Put in a quick little alt text, click select. And then now that we got that, we'll go ahead and click on publish. Then we'll click the X to get out of this and get back into the dashboard. And now it's time to actually start customizing your website. So the first thing we're gonna do is come down on the left hand side under templates and go to theme builder. Aside from the individual pages that we're gonna be covering in a little bit, these six sections are the global parts of your website that you can come in and customize specifically for your brand, such as the header, the footer, the design of your blog posts, how they look when people like view it. Same thing with the blog archive pages, 404 page, and search results. For now, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the header. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on header. Then I'm gonna click on edit. Now I know this sounds crazy because we're here in the header, we should be editing the header, but we have one thing that we have to do before we can actually start the editing process, and that is set the global colors for the site settings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click these three bars here, and then we're gonna click on site settings, and then global colors, and then we're going to actually assign our colors. I do not have the color codes on hand, so I'm gonna show you a way around that. I do have the colors that I wanna use in the logo, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually start with the primary. This is going to be, and you'll see as it changes when you select. I'm gonna hit this color sampler here, and then I'm gonna come up here and click on this and it's gonna show the different colors. So I'm gonna click that. That's gonna get the primary color set. Then I'm gonna come in and do the same thing with the secondary, and we'll use this color right here. Once you get your color set, go ahead and click on update. And then we'll click X here to get back into editing the header. Now inside of the header, obviously we already have the logo there, which basically leaves one main thing to edit in the header, which is our call us button. So we're gonna hit the pencil here to edit that. And if you come back into the brand identity worksheet, you'll see we have everything right here. All you have to do is copy and paste. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight. We'll copy and then we'll come into the text section of the button, hit paste. So we have the new phone number up and then we'll do the same thing for the link. And then we'll go ahead and click update. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and exit back out. We'll go back to the theme builder. And then we're gonna actually come into the footer and work on the footer now. So we're gonna click on the footer and then we'll click on edit. Now we'll come down here. We'll change the button again. I already have this one copied. So we'll paste that in while we have that. Of course, come back up here, copy that, paste that there. So now we have the button done. Then we have this middle section here that's going to be how you can target the specific cities and you know let people know the service area. So we're gonna go home inspection services in, and then you're gonna actually wanna come in and change out the city here. 
I do not have, you know, do not want to actually put up an actual city. This is not for an actual home inspection business. So I'm going to just in the worksheet, just put metropolis to make that kind of easier for me. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy that and I'll come in over here and I'll paste that in there. So we have that in there and then we'll come in, edit this section and you can do like uh, city one, city two, and the surrounding areas. You can list your cities here. Once you get those changed in the footer, we're gonna go ahead and click on update. And then we're gonna come back up here and we're gonna exit. And then we have one last thing that kind of covers the header and footer, which is the menus, because it's the only thing when you're editing the site that you cannot change. And this is the menu here. And then of course, down in the footer, we have the menu here with the legal pages and sitemap and stuff. So in order to change those, what you need to do inside of the dashboard is under appearance, you'll click on menus. And then you'll see the two different menus here. You have the footer, the header, and of course there's a small services thing. I'm not gonna use that though. We'll do header menu and click select. And then you see how the pages are laid out here. If you would like to do a drop down menu, for example, let's say you wanted the about page to drop down under the home page, all you would need to do is take the about page and move it over. And then if you update or save it, not update, but save, and you refresh the screen, you'll be able to actually see how it works. Where if you hover over, it, it just has the drop down with whatever you decided to put that down. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna actually keep this moved over and I'm gonna save that and put that back to the way it was. Just wanted to walk through and show you guys how you can change the menu because it's not editable while you're editing the header or footer. But at this point, all that's really left to do is to go through page by page and customize the content on the pages. So we're gonna go ahead and come back into the dashboard and go to pages. And to make it easy so we don't lose track or accidentally skip a page, we're gonna go from this section to be able to just start at the top and work our entire way down and go through all the pages. So the first one we have is the pre-purchase home inspection. So we're gonna go ahead with edit with Elementor and I'm gonna do this in a new tab so we can keep this open and having that little highlight thing where I clicked it will remind me what I've done so far. Inside of this page, the main thing that's gonna be content wise that needs to change is going to be the city. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this headline here. I'll copy the city and then I'm just gonna come in and paste that in. Obviously you can come in and change pictures and a bunch of other stuff, but because I'm just going through editing the cities and the main information, when it comes to the homepage, when we get to the homepage, I'm gonna show you how to edit these background images and all that stuff. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and just click on update. Now that that's closed, I'm gonna close these other two windows out and just move down the list. The next one is about us. So we're gonna go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. And you see, you already have your logo placed. You have your tagline listed here for you. And then of course we have the city that we need to change here. So we're gonna do that real quick. And then moving on the home page, you see we have the headshot here. Now there's two different ways you can do this. You can go ahead and just choose image and come in here and upload a new image. But what I'm gonna do is called media replace. And what we're doing is this replaces this image everywhere it's listed on the website. So it'll fix it here, it'll fix it on the home page, and it automatically has everything set up for you. So we're gonna come down and where it says replace media, we're gonna click on upload new file. Let's update just to be sure and make sure it doesn't mess anything up. And so we'll try this again. So we're back here. You wanna make sure you have the right image. So make sure that you have the little inspector guy selected and you have a check. 
and then come down and click on upload new file. Then from here, we're gonna drag in our headshot, which is just a stock photo that I pulled. I do have it resized at 800 pixels square. So it's set at the same image, nothing will actually have to change. So we're gonna come down here, make sure replace the file, everything is checked, keep the data checked, and click on upload. Now that that's done, we'll click update real quick just to be safe, and then we'll actually go back to our pages, and we're gonna open up About Us again, and take a look and make sure everything is looking right. So there you have it. Automatically replace the image for you, and you can come in here. We have our mission statement here, so we can go ahead and copy our mission statement. We can paste in our mission statement here, and then you can change the name here. Um, I'm keeping it as John Inspectorson, because why not? Um, and then other than that, it's just adding content here. Add some more write-up about yourself, the history of your company. Of course, you can always come in here and add additional content to make this specifically yours. Extra pictures of you, maybe the other inspectors that you have working for you. Picture of your work truck, things to that nature that will help the About page sell your services to your client. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Update, and we'll go back to the pages. The next page down the list is the blog posts page. This is one of the ones that I showed you inside of the templates theme builder section. You will not be editing that here. This is just the empty page that holds that template. So if you wanna change the way your blog page looks, you can go ahead and do that there. Coming down the list from blog is code of ethics. Now, Code of Ethics and Standards of Practice page, both are empty pages. These pages, let me just go ahead and click on edit. These pages literally just have the title and nothing else. So when you get your Code of Ethics and your Standards of Practice, all you would need to do on these two pages is come in and just paste it in here and then click update. Once you finish that, we'll go back to the dashboard. The next page is component life expectancy. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and just view the page. You can add more information on the top here if you would like, but other than that, this is just some basic information. So there's nothing that you necessarily have to change on this page. So we're gonna move forward with the contact us page. So go ahead and click on edit with Elementor under the contact us page. Once again, we gotta come in here and change the call us button. So we're gonna go ahead and start the copy paste process again there. And then we're gonna come into the contact form. The contact form has two different ways that you can receive the messages when people request to be contacted or you know have questions or whatever from your contact page. And you can see those when you click on actions after submit, you have collect submissions and email. I will show you after we finish this section how to view the submissions on your website, but for now we need to come down to the email section. This is where you need to put in your information and where this is going to actually send the email with the information from this form so you can follow up with your client. So you need to start with changing out the email address. You can put a custom subject if you want. Don't worry about touching anything in the message and then you just come down from, from email, you'll change this as well. And once you get that finished, you'll go ahead and click on update. That'll automatically send this information to you in an email. And like I said before, also in the back end, it will show you the submissions inside of the Elementor section of your dashboard. So since I updated, I'm gonna click update again, just to be safe. Then we're gonna go ahead and exit back out. And from the dashboard, I wanna show you real quick how to get to those. You can hover over Elementor and then just click on submissions. Once you click on submissions, all the submissions from your contact page will be listed right here. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to pages. I'll close these out and we'll keep moving down the list. So we have contact page, 
we have our FAQ page and I can open this. There's nothing on this one that you need to actually edit, but I do want to kind of show you how you can add new FAQs to your website. So once you get into Elements War, all you need to do in these, you just click the pencil for the FAQ drop downs, and then you just simply come in here, add item, add the question, add the answer, and it works just like this. So the title is going to be your question, and the description will be your answer. I'm not changing anything here, so I'm gonna go ahead and X out. Next thing is full home inspection, which is basically your services page. So we're going to go ahead and get that one open. Kind of do a quick run through on this one. It's a lot of content here. You see these different boxes here for each of the service pages for now. Right now, we're just going to get this city done. So we're going to go ahead and copy this again. Come back in here. We're going to paste it into the head highlighted text. And then moving down, if you need to move these around or let's say maybe you don't do radon testing and you want to get rid of radon testing, you can come in here and just remove the just right click and delete and that'll automatically remove it. And also quick side note, if you do something like that and you accidentally remove something and you don't plan on it, command or control Z is the undo button. So if you're on a Mac, you'll use Command Z. If you're on a PC, you'll use Control Z and that'll automatically undo that and bring it back so you don't have to worry about that. But if you weren't using radon testing and you wanted to change the way layout is, you can come in and make this down to one column. So we can go ahead and let's just delete this and show you. So it'll bring whatever it is full width you can come in if you have more, if you, let's say you wanted to bring in another one, I'll back this back out. And let's say you have another service you'd like to add. All you would need to do basically is you can right click and hit duplicate. And then from here, you can come in, edit the picture, change the content, and then you can have ribbons, which is what you see here where it says sellers and buyers that you can change and add to it here as well. For now to keep it looking right so it doesn't have two of the same things on it, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. We'll come back up, make sure I have the metropolis state in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click update. I'll close the window out and then we're moving on to the 11 month warranty. So we'll click on edit with Elementor here. Of course, same as usual, back in a new tab. We'll change the city. And I'm going to go ahead and click update. And like I said, you can continue to go back through and edit, read the information, change it, and make it unique to you. I don't think you want to sit here and watch me do that. So that's why we're moving. So I'm going to go ahead and click update again, just to be sure. And you can see when it updates, you'll have the green button will go away and go kind of gray. I just like to do that to be safe and make sure I didn't forget to click the update button. So we have that. We'll move back to pages. Thermal imaging is next. Open that one up. Very basic information here. There is nothing specific here you need to change. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. We'll move to the next one, which is the mobile landing page. This is not a regular page that you're going to see on the website linked out anywhere. This is similar to a link tree. Let me go ahead and get this open and show you. You have your logo at the top and then all of your social media links, everything. It's wall one here in one spot. So when you share this link and you can just hit the preview changes and see, and we don't need all this preview code jargon. You see the domain.com forward slash link stack is how you get to this page. And then this is how you can share kind of make it like a digital business card you can put in you can put in a video you can do a lot of different things with this to make it stand out and pop but because everything that's on it right now was set up through the pretty links all the information is already populated so you don't even have to worry about customizing this page so we'll go ahead and close those out and we'll move down the list which is our reviews page so we're going to go ahead and open this in a new tab 
On this page, you have the call us button that we need to change. You have our main review here that you can customize. And then you have a section here that already has the short code in place to display your Google business reviews. And we'll get to how we actually add them as soon as we finish the page. So we're gonna start with the button. We'll go ahead and click on the button. Now that you have that done, we'll come down to the review and you can see you have the content, which is basically the review itself. So I can go ahead and just grab this. I'll copy that, delete that, paste that, and then we'll change the name. Sally Homebuyer. And then, of course, the location as well, which is set up under the title section. So we'll just put Metropolis and update. From the dashboard, you can see the WP Google reviews. I'm going to open this in a new tab here. Once you're inside the WP Google review slider settings, what you're going to need to do is click on get Google reviews. And then you'll see crawl Google review page you'll click select and then from here you're going to type in your business name and click save and test it will bring up because I'm not gonna do this because I'm not building this for an actual business so I'm not gonna actually sync other people's reviews to my website it doesn't make sense especially considering this is just the demo so you would just simply come in let's say if your business was inspector secret you would just put inspector secret and then like your city state and click save and con uh, save and test it will bring up your google my business page once you verify that's it you just click on import reviews and it'll do it for you but that being said this is how you would actually import those reviews once you get them imported here it'll automatically populate inside of this section so for now i'm just going to click update i'm going to go back to pages close these two windows out and we'll keep moving down the list so the next thing is pre-listing home inspection once again we're changing the city and state go ahead and click there we'll paste that in you can see very basic information that allows you to go through you can customize this get some pictures of the local area, maybe some houses you've inspected. Whatever you feel is best for you and your clients and your business. Then when you get finished, we'll click update. We'll go back to pages, close that out, move down the list. The next one is the privacy policy. You don't need to touch this. This is a basic privacy policy from WordPress. Other than that, we'll move down the list and we have the home page is next. This is where you get to really dig in. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get that opened and you'll see as we go through to customize this stuff, how quick a single image can drastically change the look of the website. Now you see there's nothing wrong with the image here. It's fine, but it's still kind of clear, you know, kind of almost too clean for me. So what I did is I went through, I believe it was Pexels where I got the original image and just found a home image that looked like it had the right colors to match. And that's only because I feel like I had to use stock photos. I don't have, like I'm not a home inspector. I'm not out in the field. I don't have pictures of me and my inspection polo or whatever it is. So what I'm gonna do here um, is just upload that basic image that I have set aside over in my folder and in order to change these background images all you need to do is hit these six dots over the section when it highlights and then come under style and you'll see the image that's currently there we we'll just click choose image we'll upload the files and we'll just drag this one in add the alt text so what i'm going to do is i'm just leave that there for now we'll click insert media and then there you have it. It has close to, very close to at least in my opinion, the same color blue is in the logo and the colors throughout the site. So it just kind of pops. Now, if you see this and it doesn't look right, like the background isn't bright enough and it kind of might be hard to read, like this kind of looks, 
then what you can do at this point is actually change that background to make it a little bit brighter. So we're gonna come down to background. Oh, nope, my bad, my bad. I got ahead of myself. That will have to come in here and style. And this is when you come to the blue stuff and it goes the whole way around across, those are the columns. I'm sorry, those are the sections. And then the little gray things as you edit and you see the little gray editing handles. Those are break down in the dip into the different columns. So what we're gonna do here is change the color on the column. And you see how it has the transparency filter here. We're just gonna bring that up a little bit to get that to pop off the screen just a little bit more. But I don't wanna take it and make it completely white because then it, to me, it just doesn't look as professional. I like seeing just a little bit through it. So there we go. I kind of like that look. We'll go ahead and keep that there. Then we'll come down the list. We have home inspection services in city. Copy, paste, just as normal. So we're gonna go ahead and get that pasted in. And then you come down, you have the section here for your core values. If you wanna come in, you can just retype them out here. I'm gonna just leave them as it is right here. You have the list of your blog posts. These are the three sample blog posts that I've had put together for you guys and preloaded for you. Then we come down to client reviews. I'm gonna come in here and copy the review. Paste the review in here. Change the city. The name. And keep moving down. We have the city here again to change. And keep moving down. Then we have the phone number that we need to change. It's the same. We got the number and the link here. So we'll go ahead and highlight this. This one, copy and paste. And then you can see the FAQs. It is the same FAQs that are on the FAQ page. I wouldn't add new FAQs to the home page. That's why I have the link to the FAQ page. So you get the same basic FAQs here. And then if you want to add all the additional FAQs that you may come across that you want to add to your website, you would do that on the FAQ page. We have the mission here, so we're gonna go ahead and put in our mission statement. Paste that in. You see we have the headline here, a little bit of closing text, and then we have the main video that comes with the template. And that is it on the home page without going in and fully customizing and changing it, making it yours. So we're gonna go ahead and click on update. And then we'll go back to pages and keep moving. So the next one is professional mold testing. We'll open that one up, take a look at it, go ahead and change the city state. Once you change the city and state, we'll go ahead and click update. Back to pages, and it's just the same thing over and over, but stuff that has to happen. So we're gonna go ahead into Radon. You can get a look here. You can edit anything if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and close out because there's nothing there to really change. Then there's resources. Same basic principle here. Nothing really to change. If you want to add resources, you can add your own call to action boxes like this. Or if you wanted to duplicate the whole thing, and then that way you can just add a couple of them. So all you have to do is right click over the pencil or whatever and hit duplicate. And then you're on your way to make sure it's the same kind of layout. Settings are the same, all that. Nothing I did is actually going needs to be saved. So I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm going to just go ahead and leave. Sample report, this one is, as it sounds, just for your sample report. Got some basic content in here, and then a link 
a button here for you to put the link of your sample report. So you would just come in here and paste in the actual sample report link. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that, come over here and paste it and click update. And this is just a, as you can see, inspection software URL.com. It's not an actual link. Just kind of showing you guys how it works. Once we get that finished, we'll update one more time to be safe and go back to pages. And then we have the schedule inspection page. So we're gonna go ahead and open this. And this is where you need the embed form, uh, the embed code for your scheduler. And it's just gonna go in this section right here. Obviously, it's similar to the Google My Business stuff. I'm not putting in a fake schedule form or trying to use someone else's form just to kind of showcase you guys how to do this. You'll get the code from your inspection software, um, report software, and you just come in here and paste it in this box right here, and it'll automatically get that to populate. But since we're not doing that, the one thing we are going to do is go ahead and come in here and change the phone number. Paste that in, do the same thing for the link. We'll paste that in and click update. And then we'll go back to the pages and we'll close these out. And we're on to the next page, which is sewer scope open that up only a couple left change the city I'm getting ahead of myself there we go put that in there you can come down once again customize it make it yours we'll go ahead and click update back to the pages standards of practice once again you just have to go in paste and update and then we have termite inspection, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Come in, we'll change the city. I'm gonna go ahead and update that. We'll move back. Terms and conditions is the last thing, and this is just the basic, very basic internet terms and conditions. Once again, and again, and again, uh, we are not attorneys. The legal pages and the things you have on here are template placeholders. Highly recommend to have these looked at by an attorney to make sure anything that you need to have for your specific usage, your state, your region, things of that nature. I, I'm Like I said, I'm not an attorney. I can't tell you that it's gonna be everything you need because I know different states have different laws and require different things to be stated. But that is there and guess what now if we actually come in here and we click on view site open a new tab you can see the finished website now i don't need all this other stuff over here on the side anymore so i'm going to go ahead and just close that out we're going to put this full screen and you'll be able to actually take a look at the finished website so inspectorsecret.com client first trusted home inspections you see you have your schedule form button here. Everything is set up. All the information is inputted. It's there. Your website is finished. Congratulations. Thank you so much for trusting us with your business. I hope I didn't go too fast or too slow for you guys. I hope this made sense. If you guys have any questions, of course, feel free to comment below in the comment section on YouTube if you're following along there to install the template, or you can always shoot me a message on social media at Inspector Branding or at CJ Halleck, and I'd be glad to help you. Thank you again. I hope you're having a great day. Be great, stay boosted, and I'll see you at the top.